we're trying to prove two figures are congruent using um, transformations, we need to find one or more rigid motions that'll map one figure onto the other. So remember, rigid motions are your translations, rotations, and reflections, not dilations. So our goal here is to decide if there's one or more rigid motions that occurred that will take one figure exactly onto the other. So in this first example, which specific rigid motion could be used to prove the triangles are congruent? So I'm going to start with triangle EFG, so I'm going to call that number one. And I'm going to decide how do I take that and map it onto JKL. So when you look at this, there's a couple of strategies. One of them is to look at the orientation. So that deals with the order of the letters. So if I look, so just go with the order right here, EFG. So E to F to G. If I look at the order and then I compare that to J to K, K to L, and then back the arrows are going in the same direction overall. So that means since the arrows are going in the same direction, we say it's the same orientation. The orientation didn't change. The order of the letters stayed the same. So that means what occurred was either a translation or a rotation. If the orientation changed, then that means a reflection occurred. So we know that there's not a reflection that occurred because the orientation stayed the same. So that means when I look at this, I have to decide, did the figure turn or did it just move? Well, when I look, E's facing up and then over here is now it turned. So that tells me that I have to have a rotation. So basically what you want to look at is just compare a couple of the points. So if I compare looks like G and K correspond, or G and L correspond because they're in the same order. So if I look at 0, 0, and I look at G to L, I had to move 90 degrees. I had to turn 90 degrees. Same thing is going to apply if I'm looking at angle or point F to point K. So point F to point K, again, a 90 degree angle. So that means um, triangle E, F, G is congruent to triangle J K L because a rotation of 90 degrees on maps one triangle onto the other. And since this is a um, positive 90, that means it's a counterclockwise rotation. So I'm just going to write counterclockwise like this. Um, it's If it's positive, it's assumed to mean counterclockwise, but I'm just going to put that in parentheses after. So it's a rotation of 90 degrees counterclockwise maps one triangle onto the other. Example two, we're going to do basically the same thing. We're going to compare the triangles. So again, I'm going to number these. So we're going to start at triangle ABC, and we need to figure out how we're going to map triangle ABC onto triangle GHI. So first thing I would look at is the orientation. So if I look at the orientation going in the order of the letters, so A to B, B to C, and then A to C to A, then G H, H to I, and if you look at the order here, it's going in the same direction. So again, we have the same orientation so that tells me that a translation or a rotation occurred. So you have to ask yourself, did it slide or did it turn? And when I look, the only difference between the two is that one just moved on to moved down. So I know that it was a translation that occurred. And when I look for the translation, if I just take two points that correspond, so let's say B to H. If I look how I moved from B down to H, oops, um, 
to the coordinate. I was looking at the letter. So B to H. So you had to move 1, 2, 3. So right 3 and then down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So right 3 down 5 works for that. If I compare C to I, same thing. Right 3 down 5. A to G because A and G correspond. Right 3 down 5 also works. So I know it's a translation of 3, negative 5. So I'm going to just say that they're congruent. So triangle ABC is congruent to triangle GHI because a translation of right 3 and down 5 moves or maps one triangle onto the other. So remember the notation would be capital T 3 comma negative 5. When I'm looking at this rotation, I just explain it as a rotation of 90 degrees. But if I was going to write it using the notation, it would be capital R and then 90 degrees. Since it's centered at the origin, you just write capital R 90 degrees. Positive 90 means counterclockwise. Um, and then number three here, same thing. Let's start with triangle ABC. So I'll call that number one. Then this triangle will be number two. Check out the orientation, see if it's the same or see if it changes. So A to B, B to C, then back to A, T to K, K to H, and then back to T. Again, the arrows go in the same direction, so it's the same orientation. So that means we have either a translation or a rotation. And remember, the only way that you could have a reflection with the same orientation is if you had two reflections back to back. So you do one reflection, the orientation changes, and then you do another one, and then it goes back. But typically, if we're just trying to find one rigid motion that works, if there's if the orientation changes, that means there's definitely a reflection in there. Um, and if it stays the same, that means it's got to be a translation or rotation, unless you're looking for two reflections. So in this case, when I compare these, it, there's a definite turn. It doesn't just slide one from one triangle to the other. So if we look at our, let's just compare two points, A and T. Um, if I use 0, 0 as the center, again, of rotation, you can see that there was a 90 degree angle that you would have to go, you would have to turn um, to go from point A to point T. Same thing with C onto H. Same thing with B onto K. And if I'm going in, if I'm going from triangle one to triangle two, it's going to be a counterclockwise rotation, which again means it's going to be a positive 90. So I'm going to say triangle ABC is congruent to triangle TKH because a rotation of 90 degrees counterclockwise maps one triangle onto the other. So these are your very informal proofs, but these are the kinds of proofs that you would write for um, transformations using rigid motions to prove that one figure maps onto the other, which proves that they're congruent if you're only using rigid motions. And then remember, we have our two column statement reasons, Euclidean proofs, which are definitely much more in depth. The only time you really want to use transformational proofs like this is if it says to use rigid motions to explain.